Greetings, everyone. This is Brock from Spot Country with the Weekly Comic Book Roundup. We've covered this week's X-Men books as well as this week's installment, of, or, well, tie-in to War of the Bounty Hunters. Now it's on to Heroes Reborn, The Avengers, Guardians of the Galaxy, and an offering from Boom Studios. Keeping things off, we've got Heroes Return, the conclusion of Heroes Reborn. Where we'd left off, the Squadron Supreme of America had, found, had made it to Wakanda and were faced with the assembled Avengers. However, in Washington, D.C., the president Phil Coulson had just murdered the vice president as well as the press secretary the vice president General Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross as well as his press secretary J. Jonah Jameson and had decided that he was going to once again use the Pandemonium Cube to remake the world. So the issue begins. It turns out that, uh, well, Jameson and uh, Ross aren't the only ones that uh, are ended thanks to the Pandemonium Cube. Peter Parker, clumsy photographer from the Daily Bugle, as well as uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. operatives, Ben Grimm and Reed Richards are also taken out by the by the empowered by the power mad president. But uh, he flies to Wakanda with two uh, fighters escorting him, explaining that uh, all fighters he wants all fighters prepared to drop full payloads at his signal. The car targets Wakanda, and they'll know when they see it. The Squadron Supreme of America is already there, and try to hit them. But if you do have to kill a few, it won't be the end of the world. In Wakanda, um, well, Hyperion is is facing Thor, but he feels weaker. Um. The Phoenix is, go is taking on Power Princess, who is actually looking forward to killing another Phoenix. Starbrand is going after Power Prism. Black Panther is taking on Blur. And does manage to get a few licks in. And Blade is taking on uh, Nighthawk. All he sees is a rich kid who bought himself a rep. Probably had one bad, one hard day in his life and never got over it. Apparently, Blade is, is what you get when they're all when they're all hard days. Meanwhile, Cap go, goes after uh, Coulson, and is quite clearly seen by one of the uh, by one of Coulson's fighter uh, escorts, Captain Dan or Lieutenant Danvers. He, yeah, she's not going to shoot. But, uh... Coulson fires a bolt of energy from the uh, Pandemonium Cube at Cap. Uh, the fight continues, but it turns out that, uh... Yeah, the, the fight between Thor and Hyperion continues, and we, we will be learning what it, why it is that, Thor, that Hyperion is so weakened. Um, Black Lantern takes, takes down Blur. Starbrand destroys uh, Power Prism's, or Dr. Spectrum's Power Prism. Um... Blade and Nighthawk are actually kind of evenly matched. Danvers uh, accidentally hits the president in the head with the tip of, her, her, of the wing of her plane. The Starbrand and, and Phoenix team up against Power Princess. And they do seem to man, and that does seem to do the trick. Turns out that the uh, 
the why why is it that uh, Mark is so weak in Wakanda? The vibranium, the vibranium meteorite that you know has created Wakanda. It's a chunk of of Hyperion's homeworld. So basically, vibranium is his kryptonite. <laughs> Um, and yeah, the squadron is largely defeated. Everything is put back the way it's supposed to be. However, the next day, back with the world put back the way it was, the Starbrand baby remains the same age as she was in Heroes Reborn. Hyperion runs into the Spider-Man, apparently he's looking for a friend, an old friend, but he's apparently not there. Blur, Doctor Spectrum, Power Princess are all in the uh, are all in uh, custody. No records of their existence whatsoever. No fingerprints. No belly button even. No, you know, no, no one knows anything about Coulson either. Nighthawk's still around, swearing that uh, the world wasn't the world wasn't a mistake. The world made sense that it will be again, even if he has to do it alone. Turns out that uh, Coulson was never supposed to succeed. Coulson's victories were a surprise Mephisto. A demonstration of what one Mephisto could do. And so he apparently has uh, got to the a Council of Red that additional 615 Mephistos. Yeah, we've got multi, we have the Mephisto version of the Council of Reeds. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it does seem that uh, the plan is that they will be making a full-on move. We do get to see some of the other Mephistos, which we need some neat looks for some of them. Some of them just, you know, rather generic. Some look rather generic. Some, you know, there's definitely one that, is, that hails from Peter from uh, Spider Ham's reality. But yeah, and that is Heroes Are Born. <laughs> I keep saying it. The Heroes Heroes Reborn Heroes Return storyline is so much better than it's any business being. Um, and this, this was great. It was, it was really good. Um, the pandemonium cube was a nice touch. Yeah, uh, the, they did kind of spoil things a little bit early on by saying, yeah, Mephisto is involved. Um, I think part of it is just, it was so, every issue was just, per, was done just right. By focusing on a specific member and fleshing out the world little by little, I think it really did kind of, I think that really helped things. Um, and that, and yeah, also the, that explanation in Heroes Return about why it is that, you know, when when Cap met uh, Hyperion, you know, it kind of, you know, as, as Hyperion put it, I felt that. The shield. Presumably, also there's some vibranium. I wouldn't be surprised to learn he has some vibranium lining in his in his costume as well. But yeah. Um, there were some neat concepts. I will admit. Uh, may have to may have to take a look back at this uh, later. You know, kind of go over some of those neat concepts. But yeah. Uh, Here's return was a solid issue. I mean, hands down. This, yeah, but uh, moving on to our next book, we've got K-1. 
Captain Marvel number 29. Where we left off, in order to take down Ove, who is in the presence, Carol Danvers is attempting to learn magic. Well, Dr. Strange doesn't want to teach her. And he's pretty much put the word out to all the other magic heroes. If one is going to call, asking for help and learning how to do magic, don't help her. However, Strange didn't call the villains. So, who does uh, Carol, who does Carol go to? The Enchantress. Initially, the Enchantress is like, okay, why should I do this? And, well, Carol does get her with the whole, because Doctor Strange doesn't want, doesn't want anyone to, to do it. So, yeah. But, she does some explaining. Glossing over a few things like, Oh yeah, this guy, this magical bad guy from you know, does, does she say he's from the future? Oh no, this magical villain I fought was versed both as guarded and Atlantean magic, which Enchanters agrees is rare. So to Atlantis, they have to go. Um, where they where they they need to get the heart of the serpent. Large glowing red pearl. The pearl size, not, you know, building size or anything. But it's prevented by a barrier of ancient magic that uh, prevents other magics from crossing. So, and also guarded by a couple of giant eels, which breathe fire. And can, take a, and can stand up pretty well to uh, what Carol can do. So, yeah. But she does... she. She takes a blast from one of them, then flies in its mouth, and then outside its head. Takes out the other one, then takes the pearl. But she can't get through. She can't get through the barrier with it. Eventually, she she's trying, and elsewhere, Doctor Strange uh, aspirally calls. Rhodey, Carol's ex-boyfriend, explaining that uh, he needs her, he need, Carol needs Rhodey's help. Also, Rhodey's not too happy because, well, yeah, word of the, of Carol and Strange's hookup has you know gotten around. But. Uh, Carol taps into a subterranean lava flow to get out of where she's at. And that is where the issue ends. Um, it's, a fun, it's a fun story. Um, it'll be interesting to see where how it concludes in the next issue, but yeah. No, good issue. Not a, you know... Nothing, nothing uh, huge. Um... Yeah. Anyway, moving on to our next book, we've got Guardians of the Galaxy number 15. Where we left off, Star-Lord had manipulated Doctor Doom into joining the Guardians. Yeah. Oh, and uh, Ego the Living Planet is now a giant egg. And there's a ton of people parked around the planet. We find out that apparently... Uh, the Rim World, people from the Rim Worlds, the Galactic Rim Collective, which Hercules promptly uh, compares to the European, U European U Union, though Rocket explains, no, it, it's not like that. Though Groot does kind of, you know, but Rocket's being cranky. But, uh, Moon Dragon is uh, indisposed with what the events, with current events happening in Iron Man, while and Philo Bell is Moon Dragon's anchor, and Nova and Star Lord are playing diplomats, as seen in, in Sword. So there, we, we get a bit of the uh, conversation on the way to Earth between the two of them, like you know. Rich kind of 
Nova pointing out, you seriously asked Doc, Dr. Friggin' Doom to join the team? You know, he, he's been, you know, not so real as I was a kid. But uh, he does, and Nova also kind of points out, you know, there are things you're, you know, there are things that we, you, could, you can talk to us about. You know, he basically, Nova wants him to trust, wants Peter to trust him. But, uh, concerning Doom, Peter points out that he's a bit more cosmically aware and Doom's not wrong. Something is coming. But they arrive at uh, Sword Station 1. Nova, the last thing Nova wants to see or wants to do is make nice with more bad guys. And of course, who is it that meets Nova and Star-Lord as they arrive? But, of course, Abigail Brand and... Magneto. And Nova promptly places him under arrest for the for the deaths of uh, two beings named Mr. One and Mr. Two. They were Shi'ar sub-guardians. They were really prototype for the War Star unit. And, well, Nova's got authority to act on treaties, and he's And when it comes to space, when it comes to bringing space laws, well, yeah, that that Nova plans to bring in Magneto, so the two of them duke it out. While Brand and Star Lord try to, you know, are more diplomatic about things, and security, but security does show up, and they're basically told, you know, the and Brand does explain that they she will throw both of them off the station. If they don't stand down. So. They do. And. Maggie and Nova talk. Now, apparently Maggie knows quite a bit about the Guardians. They were originally... Started as a paramilitary unit. With Nova pointing out most people on Earth don't even know the Guardians exist. But according, from what Bran says, the Guardians are now Avengers of Space. And Magneto kind of, you know, says once upon a time they were, you know, mutants for spot, swashbucklers. Sure, their vast powers and use them to right vast wrongs. Try to get across the world they thought. They thought they knew the answers. And the world offered harder questions. So they learned, grew, evolved, and sometimes meant compromise. But, uh... Yeah... They both admit that, uh... You know, they saw the enemy, any, an enemy in each other. Magneto's willing to start over if Nova is, and, um... He, but he does ask, why did you, you know, ally yourself with Doom? And that, that Doom is not someone he, that Magneto, Magneto has asked, he's, Doom is not someone he would trust. But, uh, yeah, because, you know, something's coming soon. And, well, Magneto does say, well, let's hope he's wrong. Back with the rest of the Guardians. Ego the giant planet-sized egg... Hatches it is no and is no longer ego, but rather Dormammu. So good issue. Uh, the my own my my biggest problem with it, honestly, is just that it it's it's just set up. It serves as a prelude for Sword Number Six with uh, Star Lord and uh, Nova. And it sets up the next story arc, The Last Annihilation, which sword, w which will involve Sword and, a, at the very least, a cable one-shot. But uh, it's still, it was, it, 
I, I'll say it may be just been a larger setup issue, but it was a good setup issue. Um, so yeah, see, Al Ewing's been knocking out of the park with Guardians, and I, I'm I oh, I can't wait to read more. Moving on to our last to our last part of the video, we've got what number are you seventeen? Something is Killing the Children, number 17. And yes, I do very much appreciate this variant cover. So, um, the current arc in Something is Killing the Children is telling Erica Slaughter's story. Um, she, how she was recruited into the Order of St. George, which turned, and yeah, that, it turned out her recruitment was a bit controversial. She meets Aaron, and uh, they duke it out, and she kicks him nuts. But uh, Erica is shown, is somewhat shown around, and uh, they go to their portion of the house. But, uh, you know, Erica's introduced to, to, you know, Aaron, as well as uh, Adelaide, aka Adel the Unstoppable. The unstoppable Ada Slaughter. Apparently, Ada's got uh, good stories. And, well, not all the stories are good, though. But uh, Erica is basically, you know, prepared as best as possible for her training the next day. Basically, you know, she. They're gonna try the you know in the in the training she will be they're going to make be attempts to you know get her to well spill the beans about well everything uh, you know to break the oath uh, uh, you know to tell the secret basically but that night they're gonna you know. That night they get to, you know, think you're going to be okay. But uh, Jessica and Sissy are having drinks that night, that night and yeah. Cecilia basically is not going to go, you know, at, bringing in Erica is a bad idea. It's irresponsible. But uh, after having a bad dream about uh, the death of her parents, Erica wakes up to Aaron standing up, or sitting on her bed, to basically, you know, give, give her some advice about the next day, explaining that uh, while some of, some of what she's doing to go through the next, tomorrow is real, some of it's in her head. The monster that they're going to that she'll be facing feeds on fear. If you don't let yourself get too afraid, it won't get strong enough to hurt you that too bad. And Aaron then adds that, uh, you know, he apologizes for her parents and her for her parents and friend, and apologizes for being rude and basically, you know, asks that she don't die because she doesn't have any siblings and all the other kids are white masks and they suck. And everyone else, and everyone else except for the kids is old and mean. Erica points out she's young and mean. And once again, Erin reiterates, you know, asks her, basically, basically just asks her to promise not to die, which she does. And that is where the issue ends. And that's it for now. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Um, it's... With some of these children, it's it's laying the groundwork, and it's doing so in it's doing so well because you know more by it, it's going more into what Erica's had to deal with. But all, as much as it's going into Erica, it's also getting getting us more information about the Order of Saint George. Uh, for example, Jessica explains the history of the order. Um, Saint, the story it harkens back to the tale of Saint George and the, and the dragon. Saint George, you know, supposedly 
where where the dragon that St. George faced was killed, a church, a church was built. But that was also where the Order of St. George was born. As he told them, you know, hey, yeah, they're all... He told the townspeople that, yes, monsters are real, yet, and there are ways to kill them. But you have to keep them secret. You, you know, you can't just let everyone know all about them. So, yeah. It's... It's this kind of weird thing where you're able to tell the origin of uh, of your central character, and just and the everything feels perfect explaining how the greater world works. So yeah. Anyway, like I said, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal can be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off, saying live long and rock hard.